Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and guess what? This is um, introducing to a, introducing you, not introducing you. I am going to show you, this is a exposed spine. This means that you can see the strings on the back of the spine, as opposed to a hidden spine where you can't, okay? So, I thought I'd show you, we're going to make something along the lines of a snippet length. No, it's, it's, you could roll it and call it a snippet roll, but I'm going to deck, uh, pita, cu pita cus. <laughs> cut a piece of material and um, for the purpose of covering an exposed spine, because maybe you don't want to be able to see those strings, um, depending on the style of journal that you're making. If you have figured out how to skip the part of making um, an interior spine and, and then gluing that to the inside so you have nothing here, um, you can also just sew punch holes right through this, sew your signatures in here, and then just cover this. If you haven't uh, come across that yet, it's kind of an easier way to do it. Um, probably a little sturdier too because you still have the structure sewn right through the spine. So, so, I'm just going to take this piece of pretty material. I'm not necessarily going to put this one on that journal, but I just wanted to show you what I was thinking here. Um, not rocket science, just kind of playing with this goofy idea. And um, let me grab a pair of, I uh, can't cut a straight line. But this does have um, lines in it, so maybe I can follow it. I'm going to make it, um, so I kind of do journals that are about, well, well, well what's this one? Like one and, a, one and a quarter, one and a half, one, anywhere from 0.75 to one and a half is probably my average. So I want to cut a piece of material that's going to be a little longer so it can wrap around on either side. So that would be about there. How's that for a measurement? Um, yeah, you want a little more, but if you're going to design it for a specific journal that you already have, it's easier because you're going to be able to measure it exactly. But if you don't, then you're going to kind of wing it in the, what we call the ballpark and just hope, hope it fits. That's kind of silly, isn't it? Um, but if you do generally do... Uh, one type of journal all the time. I guess I should just cut this right off. Um, one size a lot. Maybe it's your favorite size. Or maybe you're not going to use this for a spine of a journal all, at all because maybe you're going you're gonna to decorate the cover with it. You're going to do something else. So we never know what we're going to do with these things. So it's okay to play with the fabrics and the paper and not know what you're doing. I guess that's my, my grand point. Probably need to... Now you know what? This is uh, not exactly even. But I'm just going to even it up a smidgeroo here to make it look more even. But I'm going to mask these edges with some trim so it doesn't really matter if it's perfect or not. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, in the grand scheme of things, perfection can go out the window <laughs> and it's still going to be okay. Um, yeah, because we do have that grand ability to cover things up and that, that gets us out of most fixes. I would say most of them. Okay, what side do we like better? I think I like this side better. All right, so we have a little piece. I definitely want it longer than my average journal, just in case I have to do some measuring. And what, how, let's just see what, how tall this one is. Yeah, this is a nine-incher, and that's, I don't really go bigger than nine inches because mayhem ensues based on because you're folding your 8.5 by 11 printer papers in half, and the, the, if it's bigger than that, it's there are ways around it, but... We're just going easy peasy simple. Just giving myself a, like a little quarter inch extra there, I'd say. Maybe no half inch, so we get a quarter in each and uh, just wiggle room. Okay, so let's see how it lies or lays. I guess humans lie and books lay. I don't know if I could figure that out. I think it's really a lot of fuss about nothing in the grand scheme of things. Um, you know, which way your toilet paper roll unrolls. I really, I don't think it matters. I'm going to say that out loud, and I know toes are going to curl. I don't think it matters. It still gets the job done. Yeah, okay. So this is maybe a little wide. Yeah, it's okay. Probably bring it in a little bit. Okay, we're just going to snibble it up a little bit. Just a little wide. Maybe I'll take up two of these bars. Because I might overlap with my trim, which will make it even wider, and then I'll have this giant thing. And it'll be like a tablecloth, and that'll be too much. And then I'll end up using it for something completely different. But since I'm showing you this technique today, here we go. All right, so I think I want to make it a little wider. Yeah, that's great, Pam. Um, now that you shrunk it down. Okay, so I have this. This is pretty. Some white lacy loo. Oh, I like that. 
I like that a lot, and it's a nice contrast against that. And we're going to use it some very powerful glue known as Fabrifix. It's going to adhere well. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put the glue on. Clear silicone glue, fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. And I'm going to, with great deft skill, put this down. And uh, some of these are curled up a little bit. It's all right. I'm going to put the base of it on here. We'll have some danglies. I think dangly overlap can be pretty. Because then you're going to get something like that. And I think that's kind of pretty. So I'm going to roll with it. Maybe I will end up using this on there. You just never know. Um, okay, so we have that. And I think I can cut this off here confidently. There we go. And do I want to put this on this side? Probably. We'll give it a little um, uniformity here. With this nice clear silicone glue. If you haven't seen the bottle, this is what it looks like. It's by, Be by Beacon. Um, there's a link in my Amazon shop if you're looking for it, but you can find it in most hobby and craft stores. And uh, it's not the cheapest glue, but it's really good. It gives you good grab. And uh, what is that? Some kind of brown thread. We don't want you. Now get the get it down, Pamela. The glue is drying. The glue waits for no woman. Okay, here we go. No crafter. Oh, that's not in the middle. Okay, there we go. Yeah, there we go. And we're down. And we're down. And we are down. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. There we go. There we go. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, all right, we have that. And then what are we going to do? I thought I might put some buttons down here. I thought that might be fun. It's very, you know, it's not going to be on the outside, so it can be a little bulky. I also have this tatting, which is really amazing that somebody does this by hand. I don't know how they don't go blind doing that, but that could go in the center there. That would be pretty, too. And then maybe put the buttons on top of it. Could totally do that. All right, we're doing it. You know, no more saving the pretties. Getting it out here, putting it out, and using them up so we can circulate them back into the universe and have a grand a day. Okay, here we go. More Fabrifix. This stuff is like liquid sewing. I know, and it's it's really cool because you don't have to sew. And you could totally sew these on instead. I, today's one of those days I just don't feel like it. You know what I mean? I just don't feel like making it easy. Um, okay, tatting, come to me. I'm gonna see if we can get you all organized. We have no idea what this extra string is. This is probably the string that you cut off that unravels the entire thing. I don't even know what's attached to this thing. Oh. That's probably in the glue now. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to lay it down in the center, quietly, softly, without making too much of a fuss. Maybe everything will go well. That actually looks kind of cool. I like it. Okay, there we go. Um, so we have that. Let me grab some buttons. Just a little handful in this giant thing of buttons I have. There's got to be some fun buttons. Let me have grabbed some fun ones. Let's see what we got. Okay. Um, even just some simple buttons. They don't have to be anything... Maybe I want to do different buttons, though. That would be kind of cool coming down. Do we want to do brown? I don't know. Something flat on the back that will glue well. That would be nice. Let me just try some. Maybe some. Maybe I'll stagger brown and white. Um, maybe even a black button. I could do that. I could. I could. Yeah. And just give it a little bit of... Uh, maybe I want to spread these out a bit and put little ones in between. Maybe little white ones or something. I'm, just, I'm trying a design here. I don't know if this is going to be the end finale. We are... We're exploring together. I could nest these on something. Like here's a little piece of material. Um, maybe I'll just cut this a little smaller. And maybe every button could nest on a piece of material or cheesecloth or something like that. That might be fun. And we'll just glue the whole salami down. Oh, that might be kind of cute. And now it's getting more of a textured sort of, um, you know, feeling to it. All right, there we go. All right, there we got that there. All right, one more little white button there. Okay, so I think I have them all in place. Does this one look weird because it's white? Maybe I should put a dark one there. Maybe this black one. Then I got two black ones back to black. Let's switch these. Okay, that's maybe a little more staggered. Yeah, how's that? All right, let's try something like that. Now I need more little layery things. What's this? It's like a little piece of muslin I could use. Okay, let's just get a piece here. And feather it a bit, shred it, 
feather it. I don't know. You know what I mean? Sh uh, what's that called? I don't know. Like fraying, not feathering. Who, 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 step outside. You, you need not be here, whoever said that. It was Sally. I'm sure it was. Um, okay. That one has one. This is too big. Um, rain it in. Oh, there we go. Now we're, we're, we're fraying. Mm-hmm with the best of them. I hope you're having a fun crafty experience today. Hey, just thank you for hanging out, uh, just playing with stuff. This is just fun times at Ridgemont High over here, just goofing off. Okay, just doing a little layering. Do we have another piece of something? I'll take anything. What's this purple thing? Okay, well, we could do purple. There's no um, rhyme or reason to any of this. I, I tend to lean towards an eclectic design um, style for whatever reason. I Probably I'm a lazy crafter and I don't like looking for matching stuff. I think that's probably it, but just doing a little layering here and then I'm going to come and glue all this down. You could sew these, but why? <laughs> um, you can. And that will give you good, strong anchorage. Nothing will pop off. You'll sleep at night and life will be grand. You think I could find one more nice little piece of material? I brought a whole bunch over. I can't find a little piece of muslin. Okay, I'm back over here. Okay, I found a piece of paper. Uh, okay, here's something. I found something. Here's a, a little piece of this. This came from a shirt. And I like that um, gingham-y kind of look. I do. So we're going to borrow that. There we go. Um, all right. And, and I, you can even fold it, you know, like if it's too big on itself, you could fold it. And just, and I could just maybe stick out of one side. It doesn't have to stick out of both sides. No, it doesn't, but it could. You know, better like that. All right, we'll do something like that. That's kind of cute. All right, where's my, my glue thing? Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to glue everything in place. Glue onto the tatting with the white button. Now we're going to glue this thing. I think I'm just going to put an X of the glue on the back. And you could make up a bunch of these ahead of time and just have them at the ready. Yes, you can. And then they're all set for you when you're making something. You can have, oh, I just need something to put on there, and it's you're good to go. That's where the relief comes in. If you're making gifts for the holidays, and, you know, let's say you've got 16 grandkids, and you're like, you know, like, hey, you're like a little factory for the, the Christmas presents. You're like, everybody's getting a junk journal this year. And there you go. Did I glue that? Did I? I don't think I did. Oh, maybe I did, yeah. You didn't let it dry. That was me. My bad. Okay. And we got that down. This guy. Oh, I think I'm going to put you down this way. All right. There we go. And this little lone soldier here. He's a copper button. There you are looking all coppery. Are we good? Yeah. Here's blue. Blue. All right. There we are. And then this guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, and then you. Mm. Oh, and this one. All right, there we go. We are all glued and in place. And look how fast that is. Done. Just, you know, let it grab. You want to see what it looks like on here? Okay, I'm not going to adhere it because I don't know if it's going to live on here, but then all of a sudden we have something like this. I would have to trim it, the top and the bottom, but then you have something that could look like this. Like, what's that? Nobody wants that there. Um, this, and then you have a hidden spine. So they're very, very easy to do. You can also use laces and things like that to cover things up and um, just have some fun with it. So, um... Well, let's make another one. I like this material. Is it long enough? Do we get nine inches? Oh, we do. We got nine inches of this. Okay, that's perfect. And I would say maybe this wide. Here, she's guessing again. Oh, boy. That might be a little wide. Okay, it would be nice if you, you drew a line on it and then you cut it. But no, no, you're just going with the eyeball method. Yeah, that'll, that'll serve you well in life, dear. Mm-hmm. But, you know, a lot of chefs cook without recipes. They do. I am of one of the clan. This is not nine inches. 
I, I mismeasured. Can you imagine that? I got, I got eight and a half. Well, I'll roll with it because sometimes I make eight and a half um, salad journals. That's well, okay. Yeah, it's all good. I could even cut this up into clusters after. Let's say it just didn't work measure-wise. Just chop it up into clusters like this one. You could, you could clump, 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 and you'd have pieces, and that would be very pretty. And you could do a lot of different things with it. Isn't that pretty? I mean, you could sew that on the edge of a pillow or something. You know, or or um, maybe like you have one of those tea towels that hangs over the um, bar of the oven, and this could be the topper. Yeah, I don't know. Could make a nice tie, or like in the front of your shirt, get rid of the but like buttons and just glue this on. That that you could do that. And um, and when you're just sitting around thinking of things that you could use this for, you're not trying to decide what side you should unroll your toilet paper roll on. This has meaning. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, we have that. And then, um, oh, I have something else. What? Oh, this is interesting. It's like, this came on a roll. It's got like little buttons hanging from this. Isn't that cool? And you could even do something like, like this. Let me see, maybe, maybe more like that. I don't know what this is. I don't know. Maybe we should make something totally different out of this. This is like, if you only had a piece of fabric like that, what would you do with it? Hmm. I might... I don't know, for some reason it says bookmark to me. It's saying, I'm a bookmark. Don't you see I'm a bookmark? I am so a bookmark. It's obvious to everybody. Why don't you see it, Pam? Okay, I'm going to try and make a bookmark out of you. I am. Um, okay, let me get a, a piece of card stock. I think that will help. Okay, here's just a misprint so I can use this. And maybe I'll just glue that on there. Let me glue this. All right, all right, just going around here. Now this probably would be better sewn. Maybe we'll sew it. Okay. Putting the, putting the fabric fix down. Mm-hmm. Okay. Putting this on the edge so I don't have to cut so much. Slide it up so you don't have to cut so much, Pam. Minimize your need to cut. If you put it in the right spot, It'll serve you well in the long run. Okay, there we go. There. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. And here we go. Okay, got that going. There we go. Got that. Okay, we have that. Now maybe, just maybe we want to round the corners. I don't know if this will chomp through it. We will try. It's the crocodile corner chomper. Where are we times? Yep. Oh yep, it kind of did it. It gives me at least something I can follow a guide. It sort of goes through fabric. It definitely goes through the cardstock. So I'll just round it up with my little, little my little scissors here, and just make them pretty. Um, so there's always a way, yeah. And now we got some rounded corners, which is kind of cute. And we could sew or not sew. I got a funny feeling I want to sew this to tack all these little fray things down. So this is like a, a, it's a piece of velvet. Very pretty. Let me move this conglomeration of a mess. Um, yeah, we got a messy, it's not super messy, I would like to say, but it's got stuff on it. So I just have to basically shove a bunch of stuff out of the way to get my sewing machine over here. Come on over. Come on over. Don't be shy. Okay, so let's hope this works. Turn it on. Put you in, in bird's eye view. And we're going to do a zigzag stitch. Look at this. I have like storage facility up here. Okay. Um, and we're just going to sew it. I'm going to go to four. Number four is a zigzag. And we're zigging. And we're zig... I'm, pu okay, I'm pushing. What's going on? Oh, okay. So I put stuck. Okay, here we go. And we're rolling, and we're rocking. I think it's working. I'm going super fast, probably faster than I should be, but I'm a very impatient crafter. I like to get her done. And I really like making bookmarks. I do. I'm just going to say it to the world. Oops, it's a little tricky around the corners with these things. Probably like, oh, I can't find my pedal. 
Okay, there we go. Going around the corner. Oh, get to the edge pin. All right, there we go. We're going, we're going, we're going, going. And we are good. Whip there. And then we're here. Coming around that corner. And we're zigging. And we're zagging. And this is going to hold it all together. Yes, we are sewing through glue. I know it's not a good thing, but for some reason it works. And you can clean the glue off with acetone from your needle. But make sure your sewing machine is off before you do that. Because you don't want to accidentally sew your finger. There you go. All right, here we go. All right, and we go around. And we go around, we go around, 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 around. And we go back, 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 back. Okay. All right. There we go. We have it. We have success. All right, let me try not to accidentally click this off. Now, this has really nice tactile feel. It's pelt-like. It is a velvet and it just feels so good. Oh, look at that. The brown dauber is right here. So let's go ahead and just daub this up. There's residual vintage photo on here. Enough to do the job. And we are carrying on. Um, love this. Love this a lot. It's not a super hard um, bookmark. You could make it more stiff if you want to multi-layer the cardstock, but I think it's fine for a journal. Um, now, oh, that would be kind of neat. To, I just have this old text here. That might look actually pretty cool. Four days from it before something. Oh, there's some cutie birds. They're cute too. Oh, it's a tough thing to decide. Well, we better salvage the text because that's, oh. Chaz J. Helen Helm. Okay, I do like, yeah, maybe I'm going to take the person's name. That's kind of cool. I don't know if anybody will know it's a person's name, but we will. We'll know it. And uh, that'll just be kind of really cool, actually. And I think I'm just going to ink it up a little bit. Give it a little, no, I got one black. Where's the black? And where's the black dauber? Dauber drawer. Somebody said they were afraid every time I reach over to my drawers that I'm going to fall over. But I have a stable chair now. Yes, I've smartened up in my older years to get things that don't fall over as much. You fall over enough times on your craft chair, you eventually learn, you know? And if you don't, you keep falling over. I think I'm going to double color this. So a little brown and a little black. See, Chaz J. Helm, you are going to be immortalized on my bookmark. Um, now, I could put you on the front. Oh, that's kind of pretty. I like that just like that. Okay, let's glue you down. Now, this is fabric to paper. I think I lost all my birds. All my birds on that. It's okay. I can. It's a rubber stamp. I can just make more birds. Not a big deal. You could even sew around this. That would look cute, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to glue it. There. I don't have that. That's kind of cool, right? You could put a topper on it. And what's this? This little piece of paper we could put. Maybe make a topper. Um, I wonder if you could like a scrunch topper, like like, I don't know, we're going to try this. It's This is a piece of coffee dyed something. I have no idea what it was originally. It's probably just a piece of printer paper. Maybe we're going to put that up there. That might look kind of cool. Let me let me sew it so it's a little bit more firm. This is going to be a disaster. Okay, here we go. We'll try it with the zigzag because it's already... Z oh, yeah, it doesn't like me already. Yeah, okay, just, just sew. I'm not asking much of you. I don't think anything's happening. Uh, yeah, I got a big fat nothing and some holes because uh, the string came out. Okay, well, you know what you got to do then? You go get, restring it. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm following the string, finding out where it went wrong. I don't know where it went wrong. I'm going to pull it out. It doesn't take that long to restring a sewing machine. Okay. If you know what you're doing, that's what it's not me. Okay, down around the corner, turn left, and put the thingy in. Come on. Don't, don't fight with me now. Come on, you get in there. Oh, it's not going to thread right. Okay, and I don't have my glasses on, and it's not threading right. Well, that means I have to go fuss with it. Okay, which one? Uh, 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 no, uh. All right, fine. We're not going to work with you. I, no, I don't need you. I don't need you and any of your nonsense right now. We're just going to turn you up there. How do you like that? You're, you're unplugged. We're not sewing you. <laughs> we're just going to glue this on. That's what we're going to do. Come back over here. There are always other ways. Here we go. We're going to take this weird piece of paper. We're going to put a bunch of Fabrifix glue up here. And we're going to glue it on. And you're saying, but that is less loose on top. It's going to come out. No, okay, so we're just going to tack it down with something that we have on our desk. Like maybe this. We're just going to glue this 
down and that's going to hold that. That's going to be our artificial glue. So this is the no sew, well we did sew, I, I did do some sewing, but this is the no sew way out of when you're your sewing machine doesn't want to work with you. I, I can fix that, that little threading thing. I just have to fuss with it, and I don't want to do that on the camera, so it'll take too long. Um, it, it just, that's gonna take that long, but it's just more fuss than I want to fuss right now. Okay, so there, no fussing. Okay, so we got that, that tacks all of that down. So that is good, it's like we sewed it, but we didn't, we got away with it. And maybe we want to put a button on it, because we got buttons here. You want to put a dark button? Hmm, okay, we get straightened out here so you can see the whole thing. Um, I'm going to shrink it. Okay. Um, a light button. How would that look? No, too light. Um, well, there's a different button. How about that? You weren't expecting that. That's kind of cute. Oh, there's a shell button. That's really pretty. I love these shell buttons. These look a little Victorian style shell buttons. They're pretty. That, that actually looks pretty cool. I think I'm going to do that one. So there I go, putting a little dollop of glue in the center and putting my shell button down. There we go. So it's a big decision in life which button to use. Um, but we did it, and we have now a bookmark made out of a fabric, uh, cardstock, some interesting little whatnots, and you are good to go. So we made this, and we made this. So you just never know what you're going to make at the paper outpost because it, that's the way it goes sometimes. And that's the way crafting is. You like head in one direction and next thing you know you're going this way. You don't know why but it's more fun this way so there you go. So that's what happened. <laughs> okay. Um, oh if you don't know I have a special going on right now. It's buy a fundle in May of 2023 which is a collect collection of old and interesting papers, antique ledgers, checks, receipts, postcards, old and interesting book pages, over 100 plus pieces. You will automatically receive, without using a code or a coupon, um, a triple bonus. Um, a 396-year-old book page, an authentic one, not a copy. Um, you're going to receive a Victorian card as well as a vintage ticket. So there you go. All in one place. One-stop shopping. Just for you. And um, thank you to everybody who has been here. Welcome to everybody who is new. I have a free monthly emailed newsletter. You're going to get a free digital image emailed to you every month, a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what the junk journal is and how to use it. It's a, all the freebies are at the very bottom of every newsletter. And also um, a page list of ideas on how to break a blank page. Uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, new audio material, and then you can also listen to video podcasts on Spotify any old time. And um, in my Etsy shop, I sell journals and bundles and kits when they are ready and available. And um, I sell digi kits, which are printable downloads, uh, and they, they are five pages each of themed pictures uh, so that you can, something like this, they're going to look something like this when you print them out. And then um, you can cut those out to use them for journal cards or tucks or pockets, whatever you like in your journal. And um, I have a print and mail service. If you would like me to print the printables out for you, I do them in batches of 10 digi kits, which gives you 50 printed pages on lightweight cardstock. And you just send me the list of the digi kits that you want, their names. You can send it to Etsy message or to pam at thepaperoutpost.com, which is my email address. And I will print those out for you. I only need the first two or three words and you do not need to individually buy the, um, the JPEG digi kits. And also, um, I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies, I try and put links in there for you. It does help my shop, but you do not pay more for the items for using my shop. And um, I have a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, sweatshirt, zip hoodie, mug tote or water bottle. And you can find me on Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Facebook group. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges, as well as seeing what you guys make on these videos. And also remember that fun can be simple. And where is Snuffers? Hang on. Let me go find him. Where are you? It's your, it, you're up. It's pup date time. Come on. I see you on the couch. No, you're not hiding amongst the white pillows. I see you. Yeah, you know what I'm coming. You want to do a pup date? A pup date? Come and play a pup date, okay? All right, he's coming. We have sequestered the pup for the pup date. He's coming. Hang on. I've got my mic with me, so I guess, I guess you can hear this. I am him ready. I'm totally, I'm so prepared. You have no, hi everybody. Sunshine here. I'm ready for my pup date. Okay, so um, um, a friend came over of mom's and she went and played pickleball with her and then mom came back all sweaty. And 
And that's pretty much it. Mom had some chicken. Did not share with Sunshine. No. Sunshine got kibble again. Um, what did you get, though? There were, there were treats involved. Yes. Okay, so Sunshine came when he was called, so he got a treat. And Sunshine peed where he was supposed to be. Pee. <laughs> he got a treat. <laughs> well, see, now there have been treats, haven't there? Yes. Um, so, so do you think Mom has been heavily rewarding you with treats, when you do good behavior? Yes, and it works every time. I have such good behavior. It's, it's astonishing how amazingly good I can be. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. It is. It's the truth. It's, you're just a good little boy. You want to go back to sleep? What makes you think that? <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, everybody. Happy crafting. Okay. All right, Sunny. We wish them all well, and we're excited to connect with all of them again. So take care, everybody. Happy crafting. Bye.